You likely know Patrice Daisy Lay, right? He was the creative director on Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, then became the creative director on the original Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed 2, and during the development of Brotherhood, he left Ubisoft. I was able to meet him recently during a trip to Paris to see the first game from his new studio, Panache Digital Games called Ancestors The Humankind Odyssey. It's published by The Private Division, a company from Take Two. They paid for my travel expenses to see the game. I was able to play it as well and now of course the question is, is it any good? I was able to play for one hour and yeah, I got some impressions for sure. So let's talk about that in this video of course. If you enjoy that, then a like would be super appreciated and let's go. Ancestors The Humankind Odyssey is an interesting, unique game that I feel is really only for a specific audience. You need to namely have the drive to survive and patience is key here as well because the game can be pretty punishing. I also hope that they still have some quality of life things planned because the overall experience was sometimes a little bit annoying or even frustrating at times. So you start by choosing your gender and then a pretty cool cutscene plays that set the stage for this world that is set 10 million years ago with different animals trying to eat each other and you as an ape trying to survive. At the beginning of the game one of the apes is attacked by a bird and then the child gets dropped on the ground. It's now up to you to find a place to hide this baby by using your sense and looking for a location. After that you take control of an elder ape to find this baby ape by listening to his cries and they can locate the hiding spot and yes the climbing and the movement in this game is pretty fluid and it's fun to jump from tree to tree grab that and when you get even better you can also like swing and hold on to branches and traverse the world that way but one misstep though can cause you to fall on the ground and if it was from high enough then your character will be limping along for a very long time and you have no idea how to solve it because that is the thing the game has some tutorials for what the different buttons do, but that is about it. Ancestors is really about exploring the world yourself and learning what works and how in this case heal yourself so you walk less janky all of the time. Eating these berries helped a little bit, but I recovered very slowly and there were only limited berries, so I was still this poor ape who was recovering for a really really long time. Patrice said that it's about going through the bad times to get to the good times. So you don't repeat the same mistake. Well in my experience the bad times were a little too harsh and often you also have the feeling that it was not really your mistake or that you had no control over what happened. Here I for example was just exploring the world and out of nowhere I was attacked by a snake like no idea where that was coming from but it caused my character to get poisoned and then your screen gets blurry and you have to find out how to cure it. Well it turned out that drinking water helped but again you have to know that otherwise you will be walking around with this crazy blurry screen for a really really long time but even when you know how to cure it it can take some time as well like I did not understand why I needed to drink for 10 seconds to get this debuff from me. And that especially sucks if you have the feeling that you had no control over what happened like it was very hard to spot this snake. I Never saw it, so I will totally walk close to one again and get poisoned again. The best moments during my play session were when you mastered some things that are possible. So there's a whole skill tree that lets you unlock different skills like that you see further, develop communication skills so you can better communicate with your clan. Because you have a whole clan in this game and you can control all the apes individually as well. And you have to make sure that this clan can live for generations. So you have to make babies so you also survive the next generation. I wasn't really able to experience this because I only played for one hour but that should be the case. I was able to unlock a skill though and I was being able to switch hands with the tools you can carry so that I can have this branch that I collected in the world in my right and also in my left hand. And cool is that when you hold it in your left hand then you're also able to remove things from a branch to make it a stick so that it's stronger and then you can also use it to remove rocks for example. And in my case, I was able to do that and I unlocked these mushrooms that gave me some special protection. And that's why I feel that playing this game for just an hour doesn't really do it justice because then you will mostly be going through the bad times because you simply have no clue what you can do with the things in the area around you or with the different actions that you can do. I only learned how to move the rock at the end of my play session when I had to leave and catch my train. The question I left with though is why? 
what is the overall goal of this game there's no narrative no story that gets its hooks in you so will i be looking for plants and other things to use in the world for the whole game will i be trying to stay alive by eating and drinking and sleeping enough and not getting eaten by the different animals well according to patrice the goal is to beat science to walk on two legs with less fear basically becoming human as soon as possible patrice once said that it could take 50 hours to beat the game and that you can basically play it endlessly as well there is an ending with end credits, but you should be able to keep going as well, so keep surviving I guess. There are different areas in the game that we saw in the announcement trailer as well, so you don't stay in the jungle all the time. But it's very hard to know right now if there will be enough gameplay variation between you moving from generation to generation, moving your settlements so you in the end can reach these new areas. There are different animals, but the encounter seems to be very limited and only had you able to dodge the attack. You can use a stick as well to, for example, as you see here with this crocodile, make sure that he goes away because he's getting scared of you. This is GameSpot footage by the way from December of last year but yeah the actions are overall pretty limited there's no real combat it's more like a quick time event again I think this game is really only for a specific audience that is intrigued by the setting has a drive to continue to see more of the world and evolve the character as well and is willing to spend the necessary hours to learn all the mechanics and is willing to toy around with all the tools to see what is possible it's really hard to say if the game is rewarding enough if it's really worth it to spend all those hours learning the mechanics what I did see was a a glimpse of potential depth through systems that I wasn't able to use yet but could already see. You have for example three evolution taps and in the first tap you can see how many times you died, how many generations you survived and also the different things that you can explore. Like I said I did not discover any of these things yet. There is a generation step where you can spend points and unlock things that will then pass on to the next generation and one menu for the character that you are controlling to gain abilities that you can then use right away. But I often can you use ability points and how many ability points are there to unlock in total that I really can't say yet but again the punishing nature the sometimes randomness of how things can occur and the hard to navigate worlds like there was a camp in the jungle where you had your clan but it was very hard to spot where you needed to go because everything in the jungle kind of looked the same and when you by the way discover something new for the first time you inspect it and at one point I had the idea that I had like everything in the area but there were still a ton of icons like around me so then you can zoom into that and then the result is most of the times something you already discovered before so that kind of breaks the fun like I already saw that before so why do I need to discover that again? So you want to maybe go out and explore other parts of the world. But in this game you have the mechanic the fear of the unknown. Where if you get too far from your settlement you kind of get scared and have to use your intelligence to scout the area to understand it. You get in this sort of fear mode. Something you likely get better at as you go on. But it does make it so that you're not really enticed to go and explore the rest of the world. At the beginning you get this shot where you look over the jungle and think... Okay, I can't explore that all. Well, on paper you can, but because of this mechanic, they make that extremely hard as you become a way easier target for animals trying to hunt you. So in the opening hours, it's really discouraging to leave the beginning area unless you move your settlement and overcome the fear. That can be pretty tricky. Just an incredible hard game to play for one hour and kind of judge it because there's so much that I likely don't know. But the game also did not grab me. It did not make me care for the things to come. There was no carrot at the end of the stick. Something I was working towards too. So you really have to have that drive yourself to keep going and I really hope that the game is rewarding enough. It was hard for me to tell right now. So yes, the game sadly did not meet my expectations. I'll keep an eye out though because I of course respect the work that Patrice did. I also don't think that the price of the game is announced yet and I'm not sure what it will be as well. I know that the game is in pre-beta state right now, so almost getting into beta. Meaning that it's likely a few months away from release. It should totally launch this year and I think they want to avoid October, November, December. So it's likely before that but we have no date sadly yet. Of course because I could interview him I also took my chances and asked him what he thought of as a screed right now. And how Ubisoft has been handling the franchise. Of course he could not say too much but I still think I got a pretty interesting answer that I will share in a future video. He's a really interesting person to meet and I want to thank Private Division again for inviting me to Paris to check out the game and 
talk with Patrice as well. He also could not stop talking about the 1666 Amsterdam game he worked on for two years at THQ after he left Ubisoft. Of course, THQ went bankrupt. And actually, that part of THQ that was working on this game was sold off to Ubisoft, but then Patrice left again. But in 2016, he got the rights to the 1666 Amsterdam game. So I think that he will still make it, and he agrees with that as well. So again, some interesting info on that and what he thinks of Assassin's Creed right now in a future video. Subscribe to stay up to date on that, like the video to support the channel, and for now, I will speak to you next time. Let me know what you think of Ancestors. Is it more maybe a game for you? Let me know in the comments down below. For now, goodbye!